Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews. Amen. The 11th chapter. Man, they're familiar scriptures. I'm not going to be reading all of them, but anyway, it's all by faith. It's all by faith. It's not by my might nor my power, but he said it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it's a faith walk. And we'll go down to the 6th verse of the 11th chapter. But it says, with, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. A diligently person is someone that's after it, keeps after it, striving, like Jesus said, Strive to enter into the straight gate. Straight the way and narrow it is. Amen. And few there be that find it. And I want to be one of the few that find it. How about you? Straight and narrow way. But he said strive. And that word, amen, diligently, is almost like the same thing. And just keep after it. You got to work on your faith. You got to exercise your faith. Amen. Show me your faith. Without your works, and I will show you my faith with my works. That's what I believe it tells us in the scriptures in James. Amen. We can show our faith. Faith will change a person's heart and change a person's life until they're a new creature in Christ. That old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Faith will do that for you. And that's all through the Bible. It was a faith walk, a faith you know, when the people let down on their faith, they went back into the sin and back into the world and the, the corruptions of the world, and, and it was displeasing to the Lord. And we learned a little bit about Gideon, how that Gideon was called to minister and bring deliverance to the children of Israel. But as I said, faith, it's a, impossible to please him. One scripture says, I believe it's a, the faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it, amen, but you believe it. Amen. I said you can't see it. You can't see God, but you believe that God is existing and he's real, amen. A lot of people believe in God, but they don't put real confidence and real faith in him to work in their life. And that's why we as Christians, we should let God's presence and power work in our life, and he tells us to have faith. Everyone has faith in a, a measure. God dealt to every man a measure of faith. Your faith, amen, it's according to how much you exercise it, how much it grows. That's why you got to keep after it. That's why you got to keep, amen, seeking and diligently seeking after the Lord to get your faith working, to get your faith operating. Faith is, is something that would, Jesus said, if you had the faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be removed, and it will obey you. Just a little bit of faith. Somebody said, if I had all the faith, amen, that this person has, I can do a lot more for God. But God didn't say that you can have all the faith of someone else. He wants you to use your faith. It don't have to be a great faith. Amen. It don't have to be a, 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 a mountain of faith, so to speak. Amen. It's just like a, a grain of mustard seed. That little faith can work wonders in your heart, wonders in your life. Amen. Wonders. Amen. In their loved ones' lives. Amen. That faith works. How many believes it works? And it will work for you too. You know, you can't serve God without faith. Man. People are trying to do that. They're trying to serve God without faith. 
They're just going through emotion. They're going through rituals, thinking that's going, amen, that's good enough. But, but it's not good enough. Faith is a, it's a faith walk. And Jesus sees our faith. How many knows he does? He sees your faith. He knows how to get, amen, how your faith is working in your life. But we all need that faith that will touch the hearts and lives of people. Get that faith working in you. Amen. Somebody said, where is your faith? Your faith should be in the Lord. Your faith should be in God. Amen. Not in, in the material things. You know, you, you got to have a certain amount. There's a natural faith in your in your material things where uh, if you got a chair there, you believe that when you sit down in the chair, it's not going to collapse under you. That's, that's a normal faith, natural faith. How many know that? There's a faith that you believe that when you go out and just start your automobile, it's going to automatically start. That's the natural faith. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. How many know that? Sometimes you can go out there and the battery's dead. I've had that happen, amen, to me several times, amen, to try to, to go out and start the vehicle up and then it don't have nothing. It don't have no power. The battery is dead. Maybe that's what our problem is sometimes. If our faith is not working, maybe our battery's dead, spiritually speaking. We need to get that battery charged up, amen, into a supernatural charge that we can get things accomplished for the kingdom of God and for the church, amen, to see a soul added to the kingdom. You know, that's the greatest desire that I have tonight is to see a soul won into the kingdom. If I can win one soul, it'll be worth it all. If I can help somebody, then I know that my living shall not be in vain, praise God. But as I said, we have to use the faith that God has given us Amen, like the song they were singing, amen, before it says faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use the little bit you got. That's the kind of faith, amen, that God is looking for. Faith will make ways. Hallelujah. Now, I was reading in the scriptures about these men. They borrowed an axe, and they took this axe and they were cutting trees down, and they, they put it in a boat to go over on the other side, and when they got out in the middle of the water, the ax fell off into the water, and they got all shook up. Amen. We they don't what we're going to do now. We borrowed this ax, you know, and if you borrow something, you ought to pay it back. Isn't that right? We borrowed this ax, so we're going to have to, amen, figure out how we're going to get this ax back, amen, get it back to those people that we parted it off of. And they got a man in the word of God, amen, I believe it was Elijah, got him in the boat, amen, and said, well, we lost our ax, and we borrowed this ax, and if we don't pay it back, we, we're going to be in real trouble, amen. So Elijah got in the boat with him and went out into the, he said, well, whereabouts did it fall in? And they showed him about where it fell in the water. And he, you know, talking about faith now. He took a stick and hung it over the water. And all at once, that ex, axe head began to swim. You can't, it's hard to imagine, amen, in the natural, in the mind, amen, a metal axe is going to start swimming like a fish. But it did. It came up to the top of the water, and they were able to get the axe, amen. And it took, a, it took the faith of a man by the name of Elijah to get the job done. That, that, them kind of faith things are, are really great, aren't they? To have that type of faith, you know, where people say, well, it's just impossible. God can't do it. Well, God can do the impossible. Things that's impossible with man is not impossible with God. Amen. Jesus quoted that scripture, and he was talking about a rich man. Amen. He says, it's easier, amen, for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Amen. But he says, what seems impossible with man, it's not impossible with God. And we have to use our faith. It takes faith to get, amen, even serve God every day. You need faith to do that. Without it, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. A reward. Amen. God rewards your faith. Amen. 
Like I said, you show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith with my works. Praise God. When you put forth your faith in action, it begins to get things accomplished. And that's what we need to do as Christians and believers in God. We need to really put our faith in action, amen, and get things done for the kingdom of God. Amen. His time is winding up. He is coming soon, I believe, with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus is coming soon. And if he's coming soon, we need to be waiting and watching. He says to them that look for him, he's going to appear the second time unto salvation. So we got to look unto Jesus, the altar the finisher of our faith, praise God. And you know, you go down to that whole chapter, it's faith this, faith that, faith they overcome by this, faith they overcome, amen. And it tells us here, amen, in the seventh verse it said, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Think about that now. They had millions of people probably on the earth at that time. A thousand years you can, amen, have a lot of people born into the world. Isn't that right? But God seen something in Noah. I know he seen the corruption and the wickedness of the people. and so, But he seen something in Noah that he wanted to, 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 to warn him and to to get him to prepare, amen, because he was going to send the rain, he was going to send the flood upon the earth, amen, for 40 days and 40 nights. So he says he spoke to Noah, and Noah was, I guess in, in his time, was a righteous man in the eyes of the Lord, and he said, Noah, I want you to start building this ark. He gave him all the instructions of how to build it, amen, build it out of what I believe it was, gopher wood, amen, build it, and he, he gave dimensions of, of it is one of the biggest ships, I believe, or not, not a ship. It was just designed to float, amen. It wasn't designed, amen, to sail or anything like that. It was just designed to float, and it was the biggest one until what somebody said, 1948, somewhere they built the biggest one, amen, uh, that, uh, above what Noah had done. But God spoke to Noah, and by faith, Noah, now this is faith, he began to build an ark on a mountain. <laughs> you know, most people say, well, why don't you build it down by the water? But he said, God said it's going to rain. It's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights on the face of the earth. So he started building that, building that ark up on the mountain. And he built that ark. Amen, and it, it, I don't know how long it took. It didn't take him 120 years like some people preach and teach. It doesn't say that because it said Noah was 500 years old when he had his three sons, and he was 600 years old when the boat was up on the water. So God sent the flood. But by faith, he, get, he had saved his whole family. Eight souls out of all the multitudes of people that were in on the earth at that time, only eight souls believed and were saved because they went into the ark. Eight souls. That goes to show you that many are called, but a few are chosen. How many know that? I know God's got a number of people that we can't probably count them, the millions of millions of people that's, amen, it's going to be in heaven and come back with Jesus when he comes in the clouds of glory. Think about all the righteous people that that uh, lived according to the the sacrifices that he offered up, amen, that covered their, their soul for a whole year. And, and if they died, I believe their soul went into paradise in the center of the earth, Amen, and, and we know that because Jesus went into the center of the earth and he went in and delivered them out. And he took them to heaven. Praise God. Can you give him a clap offering? I said, can you give Jesus a clap offering? Praise God for his grace. But they were saved, eight souls. Peter talked about it in the scriptures. Amen, it was the water Amen itself didn't save, but it's talking about baptism. It didn't save anybody. It didn't put away filthness. It didn't put away corruption. What puts, the, puts it away? It's the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? That's what puts away corruption. That's what puts away, amen, sins from us is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. I heard some people talking about baptism, and, and some people, de- they, they say baptism, it's all it is. Baptism, amen, is the most important. No, it ain't. It's the blood of Jesus Christ is the most important thing that, receive, that you can receive into your heart and life and cleanse you from all sin. The blood. Oh, the blood. And it takes faith to do that. I said it, take, it took faith to get up out of your seat when you, God was dealing with you and go down to an altar and kneel down and repent and ask Jesus forgiveness. It took faith for that. It takes faith, amen, to serve God every day. And that's what he said. Without it, we can do nothing. Without him, we're, it's impossible to please him. I want to please God. How many wants to be a God pleaser? Man, I know we can please men to a certain extent, but I don't want to please men. I want to please God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you can't please everybody. But if you can please God, amen, that, that's the best thing. I'm going to please God, don't you? Can't please everybody, but you can please God. Amen. So Noah began to build this ark. His sons was already grown up and married. Off, so it couldn't have took 120 years, man. And they helped build the ark. Maybe they had some of the giants. I guess some of the giants might have helped build the ark. They didn't know. They didn't know what was going to happen. But they had giants in the earth at that time, and maybe they helped work and build that ark. But we know that when the ark was done, God got all the animals in the ark, got them, amen, and He began to close the door. God took his hand and closed that door. Man, God did it, not man. They were in the ark, and maybe when that rain did start falling after, what was it, seven days after the rain started falling, amen, and it started getting up a little bit deep, and and people would come hollering and screaming, let me in, Noah, amen, let me in, you're my cousin, you're my uncle, let me in the ark, and and Noah would say, well, I, I, I can't open the door because I didn't close it, and God's got the door, amen, open today for many people that will come to him he's got that door open that we can call on his name and he will reach down and he will save us and deliver us and set us free and put us in the ark of safety give him a clap all for an hallelujah amen no wonder i can say jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go hallelujah it's the goodness of the Lord. His blessings make us rich and add it no sorrow to it at all. Praise God. There's no sorrow in serving God. Some people think sometimes, oh, it's so boring to serve God. Amen. It's, it's nothing. Amen. We can't get excited about anything. But I do. I get excited about the Lord when I come into the house of God. I come in to get a touch of the Lord. I come in to get my soul blessed. I come in to be a blessing. Amen. I want God's hand to move in my life, move in my heart. Praise God so I can encourage somebody here tonight, amen, that you can go out with victory. You can go out with faith that God's going to work in your life. He's going to work for you. Praise God. You don't see the answer right away. It's a faith, as, as it says, a substance of things Hope for the evidence of things not seen. You don't see it, but you believe it. Noah didn't see that. Amen. He mean, when God told him to build an ark, he didn't see the rain. He didn't see none of the, uh, the destruction upon the face of the earth. But he, by faith, stepped down and started building an ark. And we need to do that by faith. Step out by faith and do the Lord's work. Do the Lord's will. Amen. And he was moved with fear. I guess he feared God. I, I fear God. How many fears God today? You feel the Lord? Fear the Lord? I feel the fear of the Lord. Amen. But it's a different type of fear than the fear of, uh, of Satan's tormenting you and things like that. But he, he began to build an ark, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and because became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. You know, when Jesus went into paradise, 
I believe that Noah was down there and his family was down there. And he lit them out. Abraham was there. How many know that? All the righteous souls that died before Christ was, was crucified and raised uh, from the dead. Amen. All those souls that lived under the law and under righteousness were saved and prepared. Amen. And they went to paradise. Hallelujah. By faith they served the Lord. They did. They served God by faith. They believe, and as I preached this morning, I said it was it was something how when uh, when a leader of the of the the children of Israel died, and the children of Israel began to go back into their old ways and evil ways and worshiping the idols and and doing the corruptible things uh, of that time. Man, terrible! But God got a hold of them. God loved them when they cried out to God. You know, sometimes we had to cry out to God and say, God, I need your hand. I need you to move in my life, and I need it right now. I need your hand to move. And the children of Israel cried out to God, and God, amen, heard the cry. He looked beyond their faults. He looked beyond all of their, their failures, and he seen their need. And God always seen that. God, any time when it, the children of Israel got so rebellious and so wicked, amen, that they turned and went into the, uh, the world and in the flesh and in the idol worship, it, it displeased God. And God had to turn his head and his face away from them. But when someone begin, when they begin to see their need, that's the way it is with us today, we've got to see our need before we can ex even receive from God. A person can't even be saved unless they see their need to be saved. And that's why there's preachers and ministers and workers, amen, to try to convince people that they're lost, they need Jesus, and they need to be saved because if they die without God, they're going to go into a devil's hell. The Bible's full of stories like that. Amen. Faith. Let's go to another one here. Noah was, as I said, Noah, he, he, he meant, was an heir of righteousness, which was by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. Have we ever done that before? Went out not knowing where you've been. I know when I first got into the ministry and called Man, I wanted to work for God so bad. If, if the door opened for me, I was going. I didn't know what was in store or anything like that. I, I, I missed God a few times by it. But I just marked it down as, as experience and learning. Man, because I wanted to do something for the kingdom. I wanted to do something for God. I had a burden in my heart to help a soul to get saved and delivered and set free and I wanted to see somebody saved glory and we're working we've been working and working for the Lord and, and uh, I don't know all that we got accomplished but we will find out one of these days when we stand before the king of kings and the lords of lords praise God I tell you just make you want to shout <laughs> I said the Bible one makes you want to shout Abraham God spoke to him, said, I want you to come out from amongst your family, amen, your kindred. He said, I'm going to take you to a land where it flows with milk and honey. And he went out by faith not knowing where he was going. And a lot of times we have to do that. We, God requires some time for us to do things and we don't know how it's going to work out. We don't know what we're going to do about it. But God will make a way and he'll make a blessing out of it. Because he's God. And he loves us. How many knows, how many knows Jesus loves you? Woo, hallelujah. Amen. I know we're down in the nursing home today. And we were singing and worshiping. One of the ladies there sang, sang that song, Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> Man, I haven't sung that song in years. But for her, 
I started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen. And so any way that I can be a blessing to somebody, hey, Lord, help me to be a blessing. See, we're not just saved because we're going to be saved and just go on into heaven and, and that's it. We've got something to do while we're here. See, people are watching our lives every day. They're, they're looking at you and say, well, they got something that I don't have. And they're, they probably need that or they do want that, but we have to help them some way, somehow. So we have a f to do by faith, walk by faith, not by sight, not, to, not be what we see. Because what you see or what you have is not faith. You, why, why pray for something that you already have? Why hope for something that you already have? Faith is something that you can't see, but you trust God. Amen. And I'm sure each one of us in our time, we have to reach out by faith and reach out to get an answer from God. And the answer's on the way, saints. I want to see more people saved and delivered and set free. In our town and places that we live, amen, in communities, we want to see people delivered. Sometimes you wonder, What's it going to take to get people saved? What's it going to take? It's going to take God shaking them up. I know that. It's going to take God stirring their spirits up. It's going to, turn, amen, we, we see the troubles everywhere in the earth today. It's all over the world. But we have to keep the faith. Walk with faith. And God sees your faith. When you take one step towards faith, God will take the next one. Praise God because he wants you to get the answer. And the answer is on the way. I said the answer is on the way, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's trust him. Let's believe him. There's a whole lot of faith messages in this chapter here. If you get a chance, read it. Go home and read the 11th chapter of Hebrews and read it all the way through. And you see faith people there. Faith, faith faith just a little bit of faith you don't need a whole lot just use the little bit of faith you got and God will stir up your spirit he'll stir up your heart clean <laughs> confiding I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved I shall not be I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be I shall not be moved. 